home. This simple word can trigger an infinite amount of thoughts. For some, it's a cottage on a lake, a childhood room, or a hometown that holds more memories than you ever realize. Home. For me, when I think of home, I can't help but think of how lucky I am. When I hear the word home, I picture the most beautiful lakes that look like oceans. I picture the sand dunes that feel like mountains when you climb them. I picture a little dot on my hand that also doubles as a map. I picture my high school that has taught generation after generation of families, some of which are still here today. Home. There are millions of things I could say about my hometown. That's something that I've learned to be true throughout this past year. It's amazing the things that you can figure out when you ask the right questions. Through being a part of the Remembering Benzie Oral History Project, I got to learn all about what kind of questions to ask, how to ask them, and how to record it all. This is my internship experience. Our very first portion of the project was the Veterans History Project, and I got to interview Rachel Higgins, who was in the Navy, and Vera Jo Berry, who was a Vietnam War nurse. I loved getting the chance to interview these women. I learned so much from them, and I think my favorite part about this project was the fact that we got to start at the root of our community. As the year went on though, we got the chance to go into our next portion of the project, which was Christmas Magic. We got to help conduct interviews between families and friends, and I got the chance to interview my mom, Pam Lorenz, and her friend, Kim Forshe. And here's some highlights that I picked out from their interview together. Who or what gets you in the holiday spirit? You know, this is going to sound crazy, but I probably, I get myself in the holiday spirit. I love Christmas. I love everything about it. Mm -hmm. I love decorating. I love the music. Um, I'm already, you know, my husband gets so sick of it because I've already been playing Christmas music for a week. <laughs> and he knows that and Hallmark movies. Oh, it's like oh, yeah. nonstop. Yeah. So I, I probably just get myself in the spirit always. I'm just like a kid. Yeah. And all our kids come home at Christmas. Yeah. And that really gets, special. That gets my spirit. You know, yeah. I can't wait to see them. Yeah. What about you? I love the Christmas lights. I keep my Christmas lights in my Christmas tree up till March. <laughs> I love the Christmas music. And I hate to say it, but I love the snow. To walk downtown and have the Christmas lights, Christmas music, yes. and snow. Yes. That makes it. And the nights we wrap. Oh, and the nights we wrap. That's pretty good. But also then knowing that the family will be together. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the most special. Yeah. Um, why are the holidays important to you? Um, family. Mm -hmm. I think it's fun to watch everybody's excitement when they open up a gift that, you know, you wait and you shop and you look for something that's like, ah, that's that person. Yeah. And that's what I like to do. Yeah. And watch their face when they open it. Yeah, me too. And uh, I think just our, that's the one time of year all our kids come home together. Mm -hmm. You know, and that just, that's it for me. That makes it so special. Mm -hmm. We get cook, everybody cooks in the kitchen, and we just hang out. You know, it's great. The kitchen's a great place to congregate. Somehow we always, end, we always end up in, end the, up kitchen, in the kitchen cooking. Yeah. Oh. Okay, and one more question. So as you guys said, you guys are close friends and you have been for a long time. And you guys were talking about how family and just close friends are important to you, especially around the holidays. So if there's one thing that both of you could do together this holiday season, what would that be? Ramping gifts together. Yeah, our ramping gift night. We, we do that every year. Why is that so special? We just sit in the floor and we turn on Hallmark movies and we, we wrap, wrap ourselves gifts up. and we sit there and talk and laugh and uh, I talk her into making all my bows because she's a better fall maker. <laughs> <laughs> right? It is. It's just fun. It's just fun. And it's something we do just us. Just us two. The reason why I thought this interview was so special was because I got to see for myself how strong the connections within this community are. As we dove in deeper to the project, we had to move beyond our interviewing skills and into our editing skills. The first person that we got to interview for the legacies portion of the project was Corey Beckler, and he is the art teacher at Benzie Central High School. The reason I thought this interview was so important was because it shows what kind of students come from Benzie Central High School. Mr. Beckler clearly loves what he does, and he loves to inspire his students to be the best that they can be, and I think that says a lot about our community and what type of people are coming from it. My name is Corey Beckler. 
high school and middle school art teacher here at Benzie Central. It's a fantastic place. Living in Benzie County is a dream. Stunning beauty, very relaxed atmosphere. I seem to have some sort of a reputation of, of making kind of quirky, cool art. So I never took an art class in high school. I never took an art class in college until my senior year. Took a black and white photography class. Fell in love with it. I remember taking this brand new Baden leather basketball and putting it on my couch in my dorm room and setting the lights just right and snapping this picture where it looked like an eclipse of the moon. And it turned out great. That's, I think, what prompted me to kind of start leaning towards this art career. My dad was always the one that said, cool, you want a couch in your room, go build it. Take the tractor out in the woods and knock down a tree and you can use that. It was a kind of a crazy childhood, but anytime I seemed to have a passion for things, he, he fully embraced it. It was always that creative, what can you make out of this? What can you make out of that? The cool thing about this art gig is you can kind of make something out of nothing. What is it like teaching at Benzie Central High School? We have some absolutely exceptional students. I feel that our students are thirsty for knowledge. It's absolutely rewarding to show kids how to make things. Kids teach me so many things all day long that they, they've kept me young and knowledgeable. I hope that they will be able to walk out of here, not necessarily being spoon-fed the answers, but to be able to think on their own. How do I inspire my students? You show them as many things as possible and it's kind of up to them how much, how much they want to work at it. It's a very rewarding career. It's been a blast so far. For the next portion of the Legacies Project, I got the chance to work with Vera Jo Berry again alongside her family members who co-own the Watervale properties. Here's my final product of my interview with them. Skip Noble. I'm Maggie Duncan, Magdalene Duncan, the oldest of the group. I'm 86 years old and I've been coming that long. I'm Dory Turner. I'm Vera Jo Binky Noble Berry. Three of us, it would be our grandfather and Maggie's father. I'm the oldest brother, Oscar wanted a place where the family could gather. Oscar was an ophthalmologist who lived in Chicago. He had been looking for a place where his family could be together. And he came across an advertisement in 1916 for the sale of this property, which had been built as a lumber town in 1892. It had been built as a town, not, not just a lumber camp, but a full-size town. The building we're in right now was the boarding house for the single loggers. The building immediately to the west of us was the general store and the meat market and the company offices. And the loggers who had families built their houses along the road. And the company went bust in 1893 and the town was gradually abandoned. A Michigan Supreme Court judge bought it and used it as property to hunt on. When he died, his family put the property up for sale and Oscar Kraft saw the notice of sale and came up and looked at it and bought it in the winter of 1916. 
And our grandmother, Vera Kraft, who was the wife of Fred Kraft, brought her three girls at that time up in the summer of 1917. They lived in a tent that summer while Happy Hollow, the old schoolmaster's house, was being straightened up because yeah. <laughs> it was sort of trying to collapse. And that became the ancestral home. Mother brought us up in the summer of 1941, and that was our first summer here. And after that, we never went anywhere else in the summertime. We grew up with kids of our own age that were guest children and other family children. And we had sort of a running pack of girls and a running pack of boys <laughs> that uh, all grew up together and still are together as a pack in the summertime. Everybody makes it their own experience. They have that much freedom up here whether it's hiking in the woods north and south of Watervale, beach mm -hmm. fires with your family or with other friends that are up here. The beauty of northwestern Michigan is appreciated by so many people. Mm -hmm. We're lucky we're just parked right in the middle of it. To me, the beauty is in the land around us. It's difficult to describe because you, you want to describe the views from Lake Michigan, the views from Baldy, the colors in the fall, the colors in the winter. I, when I look out my kitchen window and there's been a snowstorm and all the trees are covered in, in snow, all I want to do is grab my camera and start taking more pictures. You have to kind of live with it in order to really understand it. But I think that's what our, our guests get a, a glimpse of that in the summer, which is why I think they keep coming back. We have fourth and fifth generation families coming. Watervale does not advertise, except by word of mouth. Most people reserve their next year's space when they are leaving. People return. If we have a problem, it's a waiting list. I think the freedom that children have is one of the attractions of Watervale. In so many ways, it's the people that make Watervale. The guests who come here, the people who work here. The families make friends. And the families get to do activities together. And they're able to make friends from far and wide. It's not that people from Indianapolis come. It's people from Indianapolis have friends from Cleveland. People they don't see during the year, they only see up here. And they're coming at the same time every year. And they continue to come back at the same time. Watervale will shine. Watervale does shine year round with people, with places, and activities and friends. It's home. I loved getting to dive into the historic side of this project and I was beyond excited to continue learning about the history of Benzie County. But our plans quickly changed when the world got put on pause due to COVID-19. In order to comply with the stay-at-home orders, we decided to change our final interviews to Zoom interviews with students and teachers from Benzie Central. Here are some highlights of my interview with Kirsten Klein. My name is Kirsten Klein. I am the choir teacher at Benzie Central Schools in Benzie County in Michigan. Um, I guess that's it. <laughs> All right, so school has been closed for over two months now, but what were your first thoughts going into it when we thought that we were gonna come back? Um, I really thought it would be exciting to get to come back, I think. You know, everybody likes having a little break. Um, you know, it's always nice to feel like you come back and you're really refreshed. And and just kind of the feeling I got from the community and from students was that they would be very excited and were looking forward to coming back. And I think that was just kind of a big uh, letdown for a lot of people to feel like we were losing that sense of community and, and school and not being able to see everybody. So what is your biggest priority as a teacher right now? Just trying to support my students however I can. Um, it doesn't even have to have anything to do with music. We've got students who are all over 
um, the map and Benzi uh, economically, geographically. I mean, it's just, we've got students who have so many different needs and I just wanna make sure that they understand that it's not about doing homework. It's about making sure that they're safe, they're taken care of and they have the support that they need. So what were you looking forward to most with school that you now have to miss out on because of the coronavirus? Um, concerts, <laughs> you know, and festival. We didn't get to do State Choral Festival, which we've never gone to before, and I would have loved to do that, and State Soul and Ensemble, and our Pops concert, which I'm sure you are missing as well as a senior. Um, it's just those moments that you feel like you've been robbed of that you're not going to get back. Or if you try to figure out a way to make it work, it's just never going to be the same. But um, I guess you find some sort of weird comfort in the fact that you're not the only one that's going through it. You're not the only school. It's happening to a lot of people right now. And it's just kind of the sacrifice that you have to make. So has the COVID situation changed the way that you look at your day-to-day -day life and your job? Um, I think it definitely has at this point in my life being pregnant and home with a toddler while I'm trying to teach at the same time. It's, I definitely feel like I can't go out and do things like I normally would to go to the store or even go to doctor's appointments. So it's really kind of mind boggling to me just to realize how you kind of take little things like that for granted. And I also feel that where we are in Benzie County, um, we're not seeing it as much as other communities are. I mean, even if you go to Lansing or Grand Rapids in Detroit, we definitely are not feeling the effects. So it's really hard, I think, for us too, to kind of wrap our heads around what is, what is actually happening. Right. So what do you hope that your students gain from this situation? Um, I hope they gain some compassion and empathy for everybody, no matter where they're from or what they're doing or what their their job is in the world right now. Um, and just maybe a little bit of grace and patience to realize how hard everybody's trying to adjust to a new way of life. Um, and just to be thankful for the things that they do have. And I'm, I've, I've seen that through a lot of students in the past couple of weeks and that's been something really nice to see. Great. So has this situation brought about any new connections among the staff at Benzie? I think it's definitely made the staff a more close-knit, tighter than it was because we're all trying to navigate and figure this out together and we rely heavily on each other. When we're in the building um, and now it's like this is completely uncharted territory and so just to have each other to kind of talk to and lean on and say hey what are you doing for this or how are you doing this and just to hear what everybody's doing and to um, you know, feed off of each other and support each other is really important. Absolutely. So what are your thoughts on how Benzi has handled the situation? Um, I, I don't know if it could have been handled any better or any differently because it's so hard to say um, what was going to happen. I mean, this is uncharted. The word I hate that is is being used over and over again is, is, is unprecedented and I'm, I'm so tired of that vocabulary word, um, but it's true. Um, I think being transparent and having open communication is very, very important. And I think for the most part, the school district has done a really good job of that with staff and students. Um, there's a couple things I probably wouldn't have come out and said right away if I was in the shoes of a leader, but, um, you know, you learn from making those mistakes too, for if it were ever, ever to happen again in our lifetime of, okay, now this is, we want to handle this situation differently. What are the, any, are there any um, notable or admirable things that Benzie has done that you'd like to point out? I think number one would definitely be the food service is a huge contribution to our community, you know, delivering meals to children in Benzie County who are birth to 18 years of age, regardless of if they are a student or at our school or not. Um, that's a huge savings for a lot of families and a relief for a lot of families. And I think that's something that has been really well done. And I know the district has plans to um, continue something along those lines over the summer, probably not delivering 
but at least to offer our families, you know, meals and food is really important. Um, and I think as far as offering devices for students who don't have devices, um, to try to participate in online learning, trying to mail paperwork out to students who have no access to internet. I feel like there's a lot of ways the district has tried to um, really reach out to families and keep them connected and not feel like, okay, well, we're only doing online. If you don't have online learning, I guess you're just not gonna have any learning. Um, so I think there's a lot of things like that that have been very admir admirable and accepted by the community. So do you have anything to, to say to your local businesses or essential workers? Um, I think our essential workers are anybody that's doing whatever they can to try to keep afloat right now. Um, our healthcare workers, um, people in the grocery store, people in convenience stores, people working at gas stations, teachers trying to work from home. I think all of us are realizing how essential we are and um, I think that's really important that we support all of those individuals. I also hope that local businesses are able to stay afloat, but to make a decision um, for this weekend that they are comfortable and confident in making and don't feel like they have to open early because they're nervous they're gonna have to shut down. So I think it's kind of, this is the weird sort of Petri dish experiment to see what's gonna happen now. Everybody's kind of waiting to see um, what the effects are gonna be now. So also kind of going off of that, what are your thoughts about um, Benzie County being one of the places in Michigan that can reopen this weekend? Um, I think it's, I think it's okay. I think um, taking it one step at a time very slowly is important. And the other part of the aspect is a lot of people are going to be really worried because we are such a tourist destination that, um, you know, once the floodgates open and we have a lot of tourists and people that are here, that's something our economy relies heavily on, um, which is great that we have that prospect to happen here in a couple of weeks. But I also think it's, we really need to be careful about what could happen. All right, so now for the final question, could you describe your quarantine experience in one word? Surreal. <laughs> that's a good one, I never would have thought of it. All right, but thank you so much for doing this interview with me, Mrs. Klein. You're welcome, Leah. I thought it was really important to include this interview into my final project because we are literally history in the making. I thought it showed a lot about how the students and teachers at Benzie had to adapt to the new changes and the uncharted territory that Corona had brought about. Overall, I think this project is one of the best choices that I've made throughout my high school career. It makes me truly happy that I got to discover for myself that our beautiful Benzie County gets even more beautiful the deeper you explore it. I have spent this year learning story after story about the place I call home. Outside from the pure beauty in the area, there's even more that lies within the county. It's something you might have to look for, but not to worry, you can find a story in every corner. This town has generational beauty that so many people get to stop and see. Even with all of the uncertainty that we have seen these last few months, Benzie County has still managed to provide a loving place for tourists and locals. I've learned a lot of things from this project, but the biggest thing that I've learned is that I'm unbelievably lucky to have spent the last 18 years learning from the residents of Benzie County and just soaking in the amazing parts of this little town. I can safely say that this place will always be home, and I can proudly say that I come from here.